brought my iPad and a backup just in case. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. Um, and everything he did say was true, believe it or not. I'd like to thank my daughters, Alexandria and Aniela, for being here tonight. My wife, Leslie, and her mother, Sheila. Good evening. We are gathered here tonight. I have to say again what Pastor Williams said, that we need to think about the people that are suffering in Florida, Texas, and the Caribbean. Make sure they're always in your thoughts. I want to thank the County of Morris for allowing me the honor of speaking here tonight. Our Freehold Director Doug Cabana, our County Administrator John Bonani, our Sheriff Jim Gannon, Assemblyman Anthony Bucco. The other thing besides the Dominican nuns in Booton High School is that at one time or another we were all volunteer firemen. As I was very privileged to grow up with these guys, even though they are considerably older than me. <laughs> Thanks again. Being here and touching this steel from the World Trade Center brings back a flood of memories from that day and all the days that I spent working at the site, digging, searching, looking for loved ones. Sometimes it is overwhelming. Although it's been 16 years, those memories are fresh in my mind, the devastation, the horrors I witnessed, the people that we lost, my colleagues that never came back to the firehouse. This steel is a powerful reminder of the worst mankind has to offer. Although these terrorist acts all occurred a distance from us, Morris County was tragically linked to that day by the 64 names of our county residents who are memorialized by these plaques on this wall and by the almost 3,000 names that we see imprinted on the bricks that surround us. Look around. Do you remember where you were and what you were doing on September 11th, 2001? Most of you do. If so, what is important is to write that down, to record it, to pass it on to the new generations so that they understand what their moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas, aunts and uncles were doing on that day. History, how it gets recorded, sometimes gets fuzzy or impersonal. Sometimes it can take on the writer's perspective or political views so it may not be as accurate as it should be. That is why it is our responsibility to give the first-hand accounts of that day to be passed on from generation to generation. So, so important to share these victims' memories. I have been fortunate enough to be able to share my experience with all of you, as well as with some very innovative educators like Dr. Lou Caruso in Bhutan who sought people who experienced September 11th to come into the classrooms to teach the next generation and give them a first-hand account of our experiences that day as they teach a module on September 11th. It is people like this who should be recognized for their commitment in teaching what happened that day to our children who can now read, see, and hear about it as part of a history lesson. As I look around, I see how wealthy I am and how wealthy all of us here are. No, not in monetary value, but wealthy in the enormous show of support demonstrated here tonight by how many friends and family that have come out here to gather. I consider myself lucky, first of all, by being here physically, but by the faces around me who continue to remember the loved ones who we lost and to remember their sacrifices. I can tell you firsthand that when the dark, lonely place of depression tries to overwhelm me, it is this support system, everybody that's here, everybody that I'm a firefighter with, that gathered here tonight that gets me through. I also consider myself lucky to be able to see my daughters, Aniela and Alexandria, grow up. I am lucky to have not had to put my parents through the pain of losing a child. Every day I'm reminded of the persons that were killed on that day, and I try to understand what the other survivors feel. The anguish of not having them come home, of not being able to be there for birthdays, for graduations, for weddings. 
This event has altered so many of our lives, our plans. In my own small world, I think of my brothers from my firehouse and will always wonder what grand plans life had in store for them. I wonder why I was spared and my brother Chris was not. Do I have survivor's guilt? No doubt. There is not a moment in time that I do not think of him and his family. My roller coaster of emotions never knows where it will stop, from the very highest highs to the lowest lows. Sometimes I cry at the most benign things, and sometimes I put on a brave face when I know that somebody has to. We know that we are not alone, and I'm sure there are many more like me who struggle with these emotions. The good news is, is there are many professionals who can help us deal with this emotion and listen to us talk about our fears and anxieties, who tell us that we are experiencing a form of depression. I have sought professional help, and I encourage anyone, anyone, no matter how tough you think you are, to go seek out that same help. There are many wonderful people out there that will help you, and we will all get through this. My firehouse sits in the shadow of Times Square, a busy place to say the least. I feel fortunate to work there. To this day, we continue to get visitors from all over the world to offer a handshake or a pat on the back to let you know they remember that day and thank us for what we do. Over the years, some of us have had questions from visitors, such as, if you would know what happened to the World Trade Center now and how those buildings came down, would you do anything differently would you be as quick to run into those buildings? And the answer is absolutely yes. We would run right back into those buildings. Because when someone is in need, we spring into action. Looking around here tonight and being surrounded by the firefighters, police officers, EMT, you can rest assured that when the emergency arises, they will respond. Whether you're career or volunteer, it is something that is ingrained into us. The overwhelming call to put others' needs in front of ours that drives us involved in the emergency services to protect life. This is our always our first and foremost goal. And you can be assured that this county is well covered from Booton to Mendham to Chatham to Roxbury. We are truly blessed with these dedicated members that you see standing behind me who keep us safe 24-7, 365, who make the sacrifices and the time commitment on all our behalves. It is important for all of us to support one another in every aspect, because this county and this country has always, always prided itself on helping one another. So it is important that when you see a need to help out, to not just stand by, hoping that somebody else will do it. I hope and pray that there are more doers than archivists in this that it infuriates all first responders that some people would rather video record someone in need rather than help. <laughs> Granted, some people are not just wired to put themselves in that role, but that's okay. There are still plenty of ways to help. I always considered myself an eternal optimist, always trying to see the bright side, no matter how dark it seems. The alternative is too depressing. I know that sounds very idealistic, but that's what gets me through the day. Now back to the roller coaster. As I stated before about the highs and lows and the bright spots, one of the bright spots lately is that we are proud to have a lot of legacy firefighters entering our ranks. That is someone who lost their father or brother on September 11th and who are now old enough to become members of the fire department city of New York. I am privileged enough to work with Stephen Regaglia in my firehouse, who was only 12 years old when his brother Lenny was killed on September 11th. And also to the Asaro brothers, who have both become members of the FDNY to follow in their dad Carl's footsteps. One of the proudest days for myself and my firehouse brothers was that we got to stand in for the father of one of the guys that was lost on September 11th when his daughter, Tara Feinberg, got married. We all felt it was such a special day to be there because Al couldn't be. Now, Tara has just given birth to two beautiful twins who 
We will get to see for the first time in person tomorrow at our firehouse. We are all so excited. That is one of the high points. As you can see, we are just one giant family in the firehouse. And we are so glad that these families, who so tragically lost, continue to share in our lives as we share in theirs. The New York City Fire Department lost 343 brave firefighters that day. A devastating loss for us. And what is really concerning is that we continue to lose members from September 11th. As of today, we have lost another 159 firefighters from cancers related to time involved there. And we have another 1,700 members who are actively battling cancer due to their time spent down there. It is important to note that we continue this fight, this raging battle, tougher than any fire we have ever faced. We need to pause to remember these members who are fighting this battle, like Ray Pfeiffer from Engine 40, who even though he was suffering and fighting a losing battle with cancer and was in excruciating pain, continued to drag himself to Washington, D.C. to climb the steps of the Capitol to lobby on behalf of the Zadroga Bill, which secures benefits for all first responders who are being assaulted in record numbers by this cancer. It still disturbs me that this person who was in so much pain had to fight so hard to get that bill who most of us feel should have been a no-brainer. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, we are all still a target. And unfortunately, this is what we deal with on a regular basis. I bring my guys on a call in Times Square and it seems so routine and so ordinary but I always keep an extra eye and an ear out for what's next. When you are in a crowd of thousands, it's easy to get distracted. I fear what may appear to be a trash can fire may be a precursor to something worse. Does that make me angry? You bet it does. Do I worry about my guys? Each and every day. But unfortunately, that is the new normal. We always have to remain vigilant. The future is always changing and the firehouse is no exception. In my firehouse, there are approximately 50 firefighters assigned and out of that number, there are only seven of us left that were on the job on September 11th. It's a challenge to say the least to explain to our new members about the job, but it's also to try to get them to understand whose shoes they are filling. The persons behind the names and faces that they see every day on that memorial wall. It is the responsibility of the seven of us to educate as them as to the sacrifice that these members made in the performance of their duties. It is a job we do not take lightly, an awesome responsibility, but we are compelled to bring their stories to life. I am proud of growing up in Booton, and I am proud of Morris County. This event reminds me of what, it, what makes Morris County such a great place to live and raise a family. It's its people. It's everyone that came out here tonight. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the people that put so much effort to stage this event year after year. Thank you to all of those who make that happen. This memorial is proof that our come together attitude, while though it seems lately has stumbled a little bit, it can be brought back. I remember after September 11, 2001, we all came together to support one another. Please, let's not forget how that felt and how much comfort it gave all of us that lost so much. Listen to one another, get involved, help those who are hurting. It is our responsibility. Don't just say, never forget. Be a part of never forget. Share their stories, their lives, what they stood for. Tell others to keep their memories alive. Pass it on from one generation to the next. We are strong. That those who we loved and lost deserve to be remembered. That they were the true heroes of that day. And it is our obligation to tell everyone their story. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly humbled and honored to be a part of this ceremony. Thank you very much.